So my name is Peter Oldbourne, I'm from Transition Black Isle, and I am a project officer with Transition Black Isle. And uh, what I want to talk to you today about is uh, how we would like to use OpenStreetMap to map cycling and walking routes around the Black Isle. And uh, at the end I'll emphasise some of the problems that we uh, really have been trying to overcome. Um, so uh, first of all, thank you very much for letting me uh, be here today. I'm sorry for not being here yesterday and only got here um, halfway through today, so sorry to have missed things. Uh, but despite the best efforts of East Coast and Scott Rail, I've got here. So that's a good thing. So um, I, uh, I'm not going to be going into the, the detail that more I've just did for uh, the sustaining Dunbar. Um, there's an awful lot going on, like there is at Sustaining Dunbar. And I probably don't know about all of it, but I'm just going to give you a quick run through the background. Um, some of you may or may not know where the Black Isle is. It's a rural peninsula, um, about 100 square miles in size. So it's quite large, um, and basically north of Inverness, founded by the Julie Murray and Cromarty Thirds. Um, it's uh, it is quite a, it's a large rural area um, with lots of dispersed uh, with dispersed population in about nine ten villages. So there's no one big place. A lot of, there's not that many employers on the Black Isle either. So a lot of people travel to Inverness for work or to Dingle for work or, or other um, other uh, towns uh, nearby. <coughs> so Transition of Black Isle is a community organisation and uh, been around for uh, us about five years or so now and uh, very active in um, community events, uh, things to do with growing, um, energy, uh, anything that you can think of um, the groups being active and uh, funded for several projects by uh, the Scottish Government's Climate Challenge Fund. Um, but uh, we're, we're, there's an awful, lot, an awful lot going on. And just one of the things that's going on is the Million Mars project. So what uh, we're trying to do is, uh, is cut 1% of the car miles driven on the black car. And uh, that 1% adds up to a million miles a year. I think there's 100 million miles a year driven on the bike. So what we're going to do is encourage lift sharing. So we have set up uh, our own uh, bespoke uh, portal to the National Lift Share site. So we have highland.liftshare.com and we're just finishing uh, Lift Share Week this week and we got to our 500th member on Wednesday. Um, and we are also encouraging use of public transport. We're successful in getting Stagecoach Highland to put a trial of bike racks on the back of buses going through the black car. Not really being used, but <laughs> a trial on this. Uh, so that'll keep going until next year. And uh, we're also promoting active travel. And uh, the big part of the project that's quite special is that we have a dozen community cycling trainers all across the black car. And they're very part time, one or two hours a week, and they're going up and giving cycling training to, um, uh, to adults, children, and quite demand responsive. So if someone's there saying that this sort of, this sort of uh, uh, training would really help me get out of my life, then the cycling trainers can go and do that. So that's a really good, uh, really good scheme. <coughs> so, what this has to do with OpenStreetMap is that we're trying to create a map, a map of the Black Isle that makes it easier for people to plan journeys by an active travel. And what we said in our application is that we would be creating this, this map and publishing it before the end of the project in March 2015. So we've got some time to do it. Um, and what the original intention was, as we went along through the project, we'd be asking people to tell us the routes that they, um, that they use for walking and cycling. Um, so we'd go around with a map to various community events, 
And what we get most of the time is people saying, that's crap, that's crap, that's no good for cycling. It wasn't very positive and it wasn't really helping us create an active travel map. It was a lot of negativity about how difficult it is for people to cycle. So, kind of wondering what was going on, but quite happy to have that March 2015 deadline, so I could just put it to the back of my mind and not worry about it. <laughs> then, I went to a tutorial in uh, Dundee, I think that was August last year, and there was someone that forwarded it on and said this might be useful to you, and I booked onto it, and booked, booked the train ticket, went along, and when I got there, I just blown away by what OpenStreetMap is and exactly how well it fits for what we're wanting to do. So the, there are some, uh, what, what, in trying to get to this aim of having a map that makes it easier to plan a journey for that to travel, there were some uh, problems that we needed to try and overcome. Um, a lot of maps like OS and digital maps obviously lack the detail to plan active travel journeys. Um, and although what we get a lot of when talking about OpenStreetMap with people is say, oh, well, I've got my OS map, so I'm finding that. And people don't seem to appreciate how much extra detail and how uh, static OS maps are and how much more information you can get from OpenStreetMap. Also, as I said, the Black Isles are a rural area. Um, and people are very spread out. So that creates a problem because we can't very easily know what all the journeys are that people are making. Uh, more I refer to community consultation that they've done in Dunbar. And when it's a town and it's a bit more defined, it's a lot easier to pinpoint those routes and have those channels of people, of journeys that people make. Um, it's a lot harder for us to do that because there are so many different villages and it's so spread out. The other problem that I was quite worried about is, is the map coming out of date. So if we, uh, a lot along the, the spine of the Black Isle, there's a lot of forestry plantations. So if we found routes, uh, shortcuts as it were, across the Black Isle on forestry tracks, um, they might come in clear on the summer and then that route would be wiped out and we just uh, published our active travel map and there are hundreds of people across the Black Isle who are funneling through to this dead end in the middle of the forest. So we're quite, uh, quite concerned that this map will come out of date. And OpenStreetMap, I saw, was the solution to all the problems that we were having. So by crowdsourcing the data, it would mean that uh, some of that responsibility would be devolved to people more locally, and also, um, it would uh, make it have the, solve the problem of the map being out of date if it's open source and continues to be edited. Uh, but what we will do is convert this open source data into an active travel map for distribution at some point. So we're not quite a blank slate uh, for OpenStreetMap um, uh, on the Black Mile. Uh, we're quite lucky to have a few people who are contributing uh, to uh, Miraboard. And you can see, so, sorry, two places on the Black Isle, one of which is a village called Miraboard. And uh, you can see some of, some buildings starting to go on, um, a lock in and the parks, a uh, little parts in the state. So some detail is being added already, which was great, but that, that was on the very, very local scale. Uh, so other things that we're trying to do is put together, um, it's, it's kind of equivalent to uh, the uh, community mapping handbook that uh, Martin was referring to earlier. Um, and it's to summarise what we're doing and also to try and list all the attacks that we want people to add to OpenStreetMap. And quite heavily trying to point people towards the wiki and saying that we don't actually need to teach you how to do everything teach yourself through the wiki. So we've been taking some first steps into community mapping. About two meetings today, it's been an internal meeting amongst uh, transition Black Isle members uh, where we didn't publicise it too much and that's to explain what we're trying to do. Then um, I organised a public one 
and uh, um, there were only really a handful of people that came that didn't already know what was going on. So uh, I want to come back to this, but we are struggling a bit to engage with people on community mapping. And you'll notice that the three people on the right who are practicing their editing there are the same three people with their backs turned. <laughs> and standing me in quotes and so um, uh, it would be great to have more more people um, uh, editing, but we have have made those first steps. Uh, so this is a, a, a this is Koboki, and this is OpenStreetMap back in April, and I added in that August 2012 tutorial, I think, the Koboki Playgrounds and Koboki Primary School. So you can see that. There's not a lot of, not a lot of detail added. Um, and if maybe for some of you heavy mappers out there, um, uh, and I don't know how you feel when you see these blank maps. Are you appalled or are you excited? <laughs> <laughs> it's trash. Um, but that's what, it, that's what it looked like. And I felt I was doing a good, good service by adding Colbroke Primary School and Colbroke Playground onto the, onto the map. So this was back in April. And then in July, uh, this, was, this was taken just after we had our first mapping meeting, um, both the mapping meetings being Kalboki. Um, so a bit more detail, the schools and the forest on, and, uh, and there's a path, and just a little, a little more detail added. And then, this is uh, September, so this is after our, um, our uh, uh, mapping meeting that we had at the start of September. Just over a month ago. Now, what happened here was me putting something on Twitter or an email or something, and then that got forwarded on by um, Tim Foster, I think, and it meant that we had this support coming like more I had with Dunbar of remote mappers um, who came and did buildings for us and, and added uh, natural features. Um, arable fields going in, and all these things that made the map look so much better and really made it easier to add more detail. So, uh, more tracks around the school were easier to add because detail was, was added in. And now, when you look at the map, there are, um, there are still more tracks that have added. Um, so, I, I, I want to say a huge thank you to anyone that did help. Um, and uh, this is just one small part of the black card. I could not believe the other, how much of the black card was edited um, in that short week or two by people. So I was, I was uh, uh, amazed and will be forever grateful. Because until this happened, I didn't think this was, <laughs> I started to think this was never going to work. Because we'll ne I never would have got people to, I, I don't know how I could have got people to have that much detail to what we to. And especially in the places between these villages, because there'll be many miles that are just their woodland, forest, fields, and houses dotted around, small tracks, and so much has been added that makes it a lot easier to then go and have these little extra details that help with routing the cycle streets or, or whatever. So I've come wanting, uh, well, I want more from you, basically. <laughs> um, and what I want to find out is, is what, what other help um, can be given to us. What I'm particularly concerned that there are three things that I'll go through. The first is that um, we have, I'm a bit concerned that the, the tags being added, the data that's being added, could be better. Perhaps there are certain values that we should be using that would be more useful. Um, particularly for using cycle streets uh, and want to make sure that that's as, as accurate as possible. Um, so I'd, I'd like someone to come and talk to me about that if they can. A second point is why I talked about engaging people. Um, how can we encourage more people locally to contribute to OpenStreetMap? Uh, when I, I think uh, something I, I came across was that in the second uh, meeting that we held. Uh, I went through the uh, stream map, what we're trying to do. Everyone's very excited. They get to, to try the editing and they don't have the, although the editing really isn't hard, 
for people who don't use computers a lot, it was quite difficult to, to get those basics right. And even things like checking, uh, going into their email accounts to, to activate and uh, debate their OSM account was tricky. So uh, I, I, what I'm thinking of doing in the future is having two streams for those meetings, one where people learn to edit and the other where they just tell, tell us information about rooms. Um, but also, more broadly, what sort of messages could we use to, to try and encourage people to add, add data themselves and start contributing detail. So lots of people out there who are good at computers and like, like maps, like walking in the outdoors, and I, I think it, it can link up different things and get people in use. So if anyone wants to talk to me to try and help with that as well, grateful. The other bit is doing something with the data. So we've got a, a few people, fortunately, in Transition Black Hard who are quite useful um, in this regard. There's someone who is just retired as a cartographer. Uh, she was on the uh, more sort of artistic side. We also have someone who uh, it works with the GIS team in Highland Council. So again, very useful person, but he's not been very involved in this recently. And so my worry is that we get further along, we've got this, this data and actually getting into a map, um, he might not be around to help us do that. So I'd like some, some help uh, and just general chat about different ideas and things that we can do. And also, um, if we're creating a map, if I'm looking for ideas of how to emphasize the good routes. So it's not just to say that there's a track that goes through and across the black arms. It would be, there are ways that you can emphasize those, that particular section of tracks, a, a series of tracks, to say that that's a good route. Um, I am not, I've not used or I'm aware of the notes facility on, on OpenStreetMaps. I'm keen to find out more. Um, so ba basically, there are these three questions. Help for getting the right information for active travel routes in particular. Um, but also asking people to contribute natural features, amenities, and all detail is useful. But particularly wanting to focus on active travel. Um, want help to try and work out how to encourage more contributors and help to get this into a, a real map. Um, possibly a real map, not necessarily, but a real map for people to use. Uh, so thank you very much. Please uh, get in touch with me and look at our website and things if you want any more information. Thank you. Let's go back to the previous slide. Question on the slide. Have you um, had any involvement with the schools in the area? Yeah. Yes, we do quite a lot with schools. Um, when I approached the geography department of the only secondary school on the Black Isle, uh, they were interested but didn't have the time and they were blaming Michael Gove at the time. <laughs> but, uh, there was also, I was told that I was being wrong for assuming that um, all children would be able to yeah. edit local street map. Mm. And I, I think, I, I probably was assuming that all kids would just be able to get one and do it. Yeah. Um, so, if, 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 if anyone's had yeah, experience... I mean, there are possibilities of tuning your, your use of, of um, people's time and so on. One, one, uh, Obvious point is that it's worth just having one or two maybe expert editors who are yeah. slick at it. I mean, you know, not necessarily have to know a lot, but if you can do things quickly, yeah. that can be worth more than two dozen people who have done it once in a while. Yeah, I'm getting, the other, I'm getting that. And the other is that if you have a bunch of primary school children with uh, cheap GPSs, and, you know, uh, phones that can do GPS plans. And no plan to say, oh, this, um, this path is ready money and my, you know, this is to my needs. Or that thing is very quick. Then that kind of, of data in, in single sessions can be put in mm -hmm. by, by one or two people. 
Yeah. Actually, fairly quickly. Yeah, and I, I think trying to go into a classroom, teach 25 yeah. kids how it, to do it, yeah. and then no, go Well, that, need, that needs a, 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 an interested teacher, but it can be a private school teacher. Mm. You know, if, you, if they're looking for a project to get the class interested in doing something collectively, then they can see the end result once it's said on the map. Mm. There are possibilities of number, but it's not magic, I mean, it, does, it doesn't necessarily work for something. I, I am aware of some people in the US who have gone into schools for that purpose of getting kids into that sort of stuff. Um, I don't know if you've come across Tile Mill for producing maps. No. It's worth taking a look at Tile Mill, which is done by the Mapbox people. It's, it's, or you can go into the Mapbox website and then walk into it. Yeah. Okay. It's simply tech, but you need someone to sort of answer questions. But it's, it's, if we're producing your own map, Blended to your purposes, that's, that's your purpose. Okay. We'll need to get somebody to tweet the word Mapbox so that we can summarize all the websites that we want to see. But Mapbox is definitely one that you want to have. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> in terms of the notes feature, it's actually quite helpful because you can put anonymous, anonymous notes in as well. Um, and so therefore people don't need to be signed up and um, as long as they put in a good enough description then these kind of expert mappers who know the local area quite well will then be able to kind of uh, actually update the details without having to go um, you know, and visit the place properly or fully necessarily. So would you be able to go into a classroom of students and say go and have a notice that way? Yeah. The other suggestion would be the, the uh, CTC, uh, you know, type of type of story, but, um, because there's a minority of people in the CTC who are, you know, have become involved in, in mapping. And all you need is a couple of, mm -hmm. of, of small groups who spend part of the summer touring the, the Black Isle and you get a lot of mapping done. Yeah. You know, even, if, even if you just ask people to um, produce GPS, GPS clouds and make the odd note about the quality of the surfaces and then your one or two sort of skilled mappers locally yeah. could, then, could then use that and that would be a, a method. Another tool is Geograph mm -hmm. uh, and someone, when I'm directing the transition back up, mm -hmm. um, I don't know what you put to, to what end he was doing. Hopefully it was for, for last year. When he's gone around and taken photos of pretty much every track yeah. on the black car, yes. so you can get an idea of, of surface yeah. and, yeah. and all these details are, are useful. Yeah. So, so that's another source. But it, it is, I think there's nothing in the movie face having one or two people who are just uh, skilled in black, just at editing yeah. locally. Yeah. Um, Whoever that may be, and I think it's it's probably more realistic to achieve that than to achieve a sort of mass of of skill and regular mappers. Yeah. Just do a quick uh, demonstration of the notes. You wanted to know how to add a note. Yeah. So there it is. It's down here. Okay. Click on that. It says add a note, and then you type in there something. And then you click add note. Okay. And that's it. So the poor people in that house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, I just, this one we're looking at a uh, couple of you here. This is on Wikipedia, something you might not have seen before. The old coordinates just up here. You might have not seen these before. You click on that, and it's going to take you to a list of all, and that's that area. Well, I didn't know that about Wikipedia. The inclusive, of course, the best one. Street map and uh, some dodgy Google Maps. But uh, there you go. That's the main thing in Wikipedia. The, the other one that you can do is if you click the little icon there up a little bit, the icon just above where you are. There, this one? right? Yeah, there. So it will come up with that. And if there is an OSM object, so if, if the place name, um, has the Wikipedia tag on it in OpenStreetMap, then it will appear in there correctly. 
and if you've got the boundary for the town, um, and that boundary of the town has the Wikipedia tag, it'll appear in there. there so that's Wikipedia. Um, but yeah, get, get Wikipedia tags into OpenStreetMap because um, it helps with things like search results yeah. in terms of correct ordering and so on. Okay. As far as uh, getting people to participate, it's like where you're getting like one of them. To experts, it takes a while to get that going. The way in Edinburgh, we actually have people coming in every three months. We meet in the pub. We try to attach ourselves to other groups, like there is the Wikipedians, yeah. or just something else, just something that there's a some place that is known that uh, people can meet. So you go to the Open Street Map website and you make a bookie uh, page just for uh, where you meet in the pub. Not every, usually two months. We we found every three months virtually that. Well, it's, it's actually monthly within the central bill, but it's, it rotates between location. Yeah, right. So, but uh, just that uh, single point of contact, it might just, you get one person, you, you talk to them, and then they get inspired, they might come back a year later. Yeah. And it's just, you, you realise that they create a monster in that different. I don't think there's a, I don't think there's a magic bullet, unfortunately. I think lots of people will see, I think partly is actually just getting in front of lots of people will actually some of those people will see it and go, oh, actually that looks really good. And yeah. Yeah. So them how to think, as soon as they see it, people, what they do is they go, oh, where's my house? Yeah. And their house probably isn't there. And then you show them how to edit it. And they go, oh, what about these paths? Mm. And as soon as they start going, oh, it's like one of the guys I've shown the other day, you go, oh, that path is like road up to there. And then it's like cycleway. And then it's like single track. And suddenly, but, you know, you show them how to edit it. And, but you probably have to show 100 people and then you, know, you maybe get a few people that yeah. buy them. So, that, that, so it is, it is um, yeah, it's, it is, I don't think it's, I guess it is, and lots of people think they'll have time to do it, and they, you've got to try and, you know, you can use it to time. Yeah. Um, um, if, another thing which works in quite often is mapping the parties where the head of town, sometimes months ahead of town, yeah. you organise it to be half a dozen people, maybe four people, and you're probably the minimum, and you decide in an area. So it, 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 it can work very well for instance if you have like someone in a car, a couple of people on bikes and one of the people on foot, and they'll just do the area. And then you sit down at the end of the day or often as over the weekend, two days, and you just mark that area mm -hmm. in North Aids in the UK. Um, and even if things change afterwards, you've got a good place yeah. for, for, for changing. Mm. So marking parties can be useful. They can sometimes be it's also because you can bring in people from outside there by in Vanessa, for instance. Yeah. If, if in Vanessa has been mapped out, you may find frustrated mappers wanting to do something. Yeah. <laughs> and the mapping part is very encourage people in between. But you'd have to organize that some months in advance. Yeah. So you have to actually have people there. I mean, I suspect, if, yeah, I would probably travel up if you were doing another map. If I was free, I mean, yeah. we're busy. But there's probably, a, certainly in the central, there's probably a number of us that would probably would come up and help for a weekend if it was. Because yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, that's not a sustainable model because that's people coming from the outside and helping and leaving. But yeah. you know, yeah. it, it's, 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 like it's that, good that for kickstarting it though. It's exactly that kickstarts yeah. things. It's much easier to update um, and, and correct yeah. Um, yeah. an existing decent mind when you've got that base. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the, the other thing is about the, the school there. I noticed you just mapped the, it looks like the building had been marked as a school. Yeah. Whereas what I tend to do is mark the school grounds as the school and then do the building as a building equals school or building equals education and that way it, it, ma it makes it a bit more detailed. I also try and put entrances on as well yeah. and that way things like routing engines can then route you to the, the entrance of the school rather than just the centre point and you know, it's not the first time I've seen it where the centre point of the school might end up being closer to the road in the back which is no access yeah. rather than the main entrance. Yeah. Um, th this thing that I'm just about to show you here is uh, a little tool from uh, ITO World and it shows all the map people that have been mapping in your area over the last three months and who it yeah. is and then you can connect with them and say, can you do some work? Yeah. Okay. Right. So that's a tool and it does analysis of tags, what kind of tags it is. They've got various different analysis tools of that area that okay. will be able to show you visually and also give you a list of things that uh, can do. It's very, uh, I started a long time ago and I saw somebody yeah. and I used to email them. 
Yeah, yeah I mean, like. <laughs> I've done a really good job actually. We've sort of the Edinburgh pub meetings and actually just going around every room that have been mapping locally. Um, some might say spamming, other people might yeah. say getting in touch with, yeah. and just getting in touch with everybody and making sure everybody knew that there was an event going on. Actually, that still remains a little bit of a problem. Yeah. Occasionally, someone comes up to the pub that's been mapping for ages and they go, We had no idea you guys were meeting every week in the yeah. pub. So, yeah. Um, it's, it's, it is very difficult. It's one of the things that we've actually been talking with with people down in the state of the map of Birmingham. And uh, they just quite haven't got the handle on it that there is a social side of this because there's a lot of people that do want to get out and about. It's not, uh, but they want to just do to have that therapy session We're down in the pub talking about somebody that actually knows what you're talking about. But on, the, uh, on, on the flip side of that, I am aware of some open shop people who are really, really prolific but will not meet another yeah, old person. And that's fine as well, and that's fine as well. Yeah. But it's worth, it's worth getting in touch with the local, I mean, it sounds like you've done that already, with getting in touch and just sending, chatting to people within the Black Guard, but also the surrounding area as well. And just saying, the, the, yeah, it's like Yeah, but yeah, the, yeah no, I found something to cover it was the list of them all, but it was only about six. Yeah, the big bit. It's like people would be lighting around and people to come in. Yeah. Yeah. And it might be maybe too small for some point. Maybe if you were thinking about a large scale, you might want to think about a large scale. Yeah. Get into a two dozen GPS units to actually get a lot of yeah. that. Okay. That's the thing that might be, might be, it's all really important. I think it's one thing from a usability perspective, which we miss often. And I think he actually had a bar. We put quite a lot of effort into doing the mapping and very little effort into making sure that that's published or available. Yeah. So, for example, and I'm thinking Dunbar, one of the things we might have done really useful in Dunbar would have been if somebody had the, the, the technological expertise to get it onto the internet on your website so that people could see it. Because that's why I was thinking for yourselves. Yeah. That, that it's, to expect those and those people to be fascinated by adding to maps is unrealistic. We're all rather geeky off people. <laughs> I speak for myself. Um, you know, but but once people, if you can show it yeah. and say, here is the map of Dunbar, what's missing? I'm sure you'll get loads of people saying, oh, does that mean cut through? Yeah. And they're never going to be, loads of them are never going to be interested in adding it. Yeah. But if they can see it easily in a place where they visit more than once, yeah. you know, or if it's on paper, or if it's on a common yeah. website that they use for other reasons, yeah. We missed, we missed that, yeah. I think. Yes. In, yeah. in fact, in fact yes. that's a very good point because... Yes. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's a really good point because before the Open Cycle Map came along, there was very few cycle maps properly mapped. Um, so the Open Cycle route, yeah. Cycle Routes mapped. Yeah. But once the Cycle Routes, uh, once the map had been put up, this, and it was getting updated every week, loads of people were going out, mapping the Cycle Routes, going away checking they were in the map correctly, and then when they were spotting errors, they were going away fixing it. Yeah. And so actually by, by, by getting that kind of feedback loop there, that's probably the crucial one. And then also having an easy feedback system. And one of the things the cycle streets have is a very easy way to provide feedback on the routes. Yeah. And so quite often you get feedback coming through, which is very, very specific and very detailed, saying very specifically about why a certain section of the route is bad and why it, you probably go a different way or you know so if you can have a good feedback system and like that and those shop notes interface can to some degree actually deal with some of that um, and I believe there's an API for the notes interface which means you can sit there and add that directly into your website as well um, so then people can go away and put notes within the map which you've produced for this so then it can actually help and you can possibly put more guidance as to you know, how, you know, how much detail you need to put into the, the note. And that way you can have these kind of dedicated mappers who then go away and um, take in these notes and feedback and improve on it and, and actually improve the data. But actually getting the, you know, having an easy feedback mechanism I think is crucial. Yeah. Right, I think we are going to do that. Uh, but I believe that you're the person that came from the furthest north. Hey. <laughs> you get to from there, sir.